the Pacific Ring of Fire, basically a ring of earthquakes, biggest earthquakes, volcanoes and devastation, tsunamis. It's an absolute disaster, is unusually active when it comes to everything. So why is that? What could that be? I've reported about it multiple times. I just released a video about the 6.4 earthquake in Papua New Guinea that could trigger something even worse, plus a tsunami. Japan, we just had it. The Nankai Trough, big, big mega thrust earthquake that they think could happen soon. But we, we do have earthquakes in the magnitude seven range. I'm sitting on the Cascadia Fault that is overdue for the big Cascadia earthquake, magnitude nine plus. Chile, so many other regions. Why is this like this? All the te these tectonic plates are crushing into each other, underneath each other, slide crazy. I just said in my Papua New Guinea video, Papua New Guinea, this area is so fractured and so bad. It's a geological war zone. But we could say that the Pacific Ring of Fire is that as well. And since I'm mentioning it so often in my videos, I want to look into further detail. What is this? What is going on there? And it will blow your mind. So the Ring of Fire, if you see it, it looks like a horseshoe which I like. A horseshoe brings luck. I have horses, right? I don't shoe my horses, but still, I like horseshoes. So horseshoe shaped zone around the Pacific Ocean. Pacific, beautiful ocean. We love it all, but it's known for its intense geological activity, including this high concentration of volcanoes and earthquakes, basically around that horseshoe volcano, dot, 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 dot. And I wanna show you this picture that was taken out of a plane where you see volcanoes here on the West Coast, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, Mount Rainier. Look at these volcanoes, how close they are together. I always, if I drive I-5, if you drive through Oregon and into Washington and towards British Columbia, yeah, you, you know, there's these volcanoes, there's Mount Hood near Portland, and then, you know, there's, there's the Washington volcanoes, Mount Rene, Adams, St. Helens, and, and, and at the end, Mount Baker, but it always feels like, yeah, they're not that close together, but if you look at that picture, and then look at a Cascadia Fault earthquake magnitude 9 plus, a subduction zone that is subducting underneath and it's locked and loaded. If it unlocks, one plate will jump up. Could that trigger volcanic eruptions? In theory, it could. Hopefully it won't, but there's going to be so much devastation. It doesn't really matter. Nah. Yeah, of course it does because um, you need rescue personnel. Uh, the Scientists are saying the Cascadia earthquake will destroy the Pacific Northwest. It will rip it open. Everything west of I-5 will be destroyed. So if you have volcanic eruptions and ash so that planes cannot fly, it's a problem. And just on a side note, I read this today. They want to build that high-speed rail, a high-speed rail from Vancouver to Portland. And look at where where they're building it, where that lies. And in my last video, I have reported about that event that is happening at, alongside the Cascadia Fault right now with closely to 8,000 earthquakes in three days, small earthquakes. But look where the earthquakes are and now look where they're building that railing, that, that train. And these earthquakes, this event happens every 13 to 16 months. Just right now, it's unusually strong and unusually many. But that rail system there, would you take that rail? Often these high-speed rails are on tall bridges. Imagine the Cascadia Fault earthquake, the plate jumps up and you've got that train. It'll blow the whole train 100 miles further somewhere. I don't even want to think about this. I will never take that train, I'm so sure. But let's get back to the Pacific Ring of Fire. This is just one area where the Pacific Ring of Fire could cause the, the biggest devastation that we all have seen in, in, in our lifetimes and in, in, in New Age. So even like tsunami 2004, 2011 is nothing against what will happen there. So Pacific Ring of Fire, high concentration of earthquakes and volcanoes spans approximately 25,000 miles, that's 40,000 kilometers in length. 
and up to 310 miles up to 500 kilometers wide it's it's one of the most dynamic regions on earth and that's why i will these numbers that you see now should not surprise us but they still do they call it like pacific ring of fire rim of fire girdle of fire the circum pacific belt doesn't matter how you call it it is still one of the most geologically active areas on earth so what is this what is this ring of fire it's not a little it's not a literal ring but it's a vast arc of seismic and volcanic activity. It was formed by the movement and interaction of tectonic plates that are surrounding the Pacific Ocean Basin. And then these plate boundaries create these dangerous subduction zones where the plates are sliding underneath each other and then get locked. So the plate is forced beneath one another. That is probably a better word. So that creates these intense geological phenomena. The Ring of Fire touches 17 different countries, including North America, the US, including Alaska, Canada, and Mexico. Central America, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama. South America, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Argentina, Asia, Japan, Philippines, Indonesia, Oceania, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, just reported about that. Over 75% of the world's population lives in the ring of fire or on the ring of fire or how you wanna say this that makes it one of the most populous geological regions on the planet yeah because the pacific you want to live near the pacific ocean and here it comes guys approximately 75 percent of the world's active or dormant volcanoes are located along the pacific ring of fire with an estimated 450 to 500 volcanoes 500 volcanoes and then the interaction of the tectonic plates generates friction that causes the magma to rise and form these volcanoes the most notable examples for example are mount fuji in japan of course mount st helens united states this is just 45 years ago that it had this devastating blow where the mountain blew its top off of an absolutely crazy situation. And then Krakatoa in Indonesia, of course, the 1883 eruption of Krakatoa was among the most powerful in recorded history with a force equivalent to 200 megatons of TNT. This event has triggered tsunamis has ended over 36,000 people and altering global climate for years. Imagine something would happen today when there's way more populated areas. The Pacific Ring of Fire is also an earthquake hotspot. And here comes the number, guys, that is also blowing your mind. Approximately 90% of all earthquakes occur along the Pacific Ring of Fire. What a great place to live. This is, of course, also because of the movement of the tectonic plates. The Pacific plate is being subducted beneath the surrounding plates. And that causes immense pressure that leads to volcanic eruptions and also these earthquakes. Yeah. And here comes the 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan with the magnitude 9.1. And then the 1960 Valdivia earthquake in Chile, magnitude 9.5, the strongest ever recorded. And they say Cascadia Fault can produce something like that as well. So 
The, this dynamic geology of the Ring of Fire results from the interactions of several major and minor tectonic plates that are covering the Earth, that are somewhat swimming around on the liquid ionosphere of the Earth. Major plates, Pacific plate, North American plate, Eurasian plate, Indo-Australian plate, smaller plates, Philippine Sea plate, Juan de Fuca plate here on the West Coast and the Cocos plate. Cocos plate sounds always so nice. It thinks me like coco coconut, vacation, beach. Nah, it's not that nice. And there's more, there's more. The movements of these tectonic plates have shaped trenches, have shaped the region's mountains, of course, trenches and that volcanic activity. The world's deepest trench is part of that. The Ring of Fire is home to the Mariana Trench. It's the deepest point on Earth. It's located east of the Mariana Islands in the Western Pacific Ocean. This trench is really, really deep, guys. It reaches a depth of 36,070 feet. That's 10,994 meters. So that's easily surpassing the height of Mount Everest. And where does that come from? Well, that trench is formed by the subduction of the Pacific Plate beneath the Mariana Plate. So that whole thing, the Pacific Ring of Fire is prone to natural disasters, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, and landslides that can also occur underwater and then trigger more tsunamis. There's also underwater volcanoes. Check out my video. The actual seamount in Oregon is about to go off. It's the first time that they can hopefully film an underwater volcano eruption. And another thing, geothermal energy. The Ring of Fire's volcanic activity makes it a significant source of geothermal energy. So there's at least one good thing that comes from that. It's like countries like New Zealand and Iceland utilize geothermal resources for electricity generation and heating. And Iceland, for the ones that watch my channel more often, for the lagoonies, the blue lagoon that gives you a thrill. You know why if you watch my channel on a regular basis. Because of all that that's going on, the Pacific Ring of Fire has, has diverse climates and ecosystems. It, and there's a wide variety of different climates and ecosystems, like the, the snow-capped Andes Mountains in South America to the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia. And it's great. This diversity supports unique plant and animal life across the whole region. I mean, that's, it's beautiful. And there is something interesting that the scientists are kind of coming up with in theory, what they think might happen to the Ring of Fire or what the Ring of Fire might do, like form a future subcontinent. So they think that the Ring of Fire might contribute to the formation of a future subcontinent, like the slow movement of tectonic plates around the Pacific Ocean could, of course, thankfully, not quickly, over millions of years, lead to their eventual collision, creating a landmass similar to Pangea, which existed over 300 million years ago. So kind of cool, but super scary. So I would say, to close this video that this specific ring of fire and disaster really should remind us or we should listen to the fact that the earth is constantly changing its geology. Nothing ever stays the same. The volcanoes and the earthquakes in this region can have a devastating impact on human populations. But they also have a important role in shaping the planet's landscape and ecosystems. 
I hope you found this interesting, guys. If you did, leave it a like, become a subscriber. And if you want to support the channel, go to my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. Link is in the description of this video. You can send me or I can send you, I can answer you with a 30 second video message and then you can send me a message back and I can send so we can see each other. It's pretty cool. It's a new feature that they have. And thank you everyone for being a supportive member of this channel. You're getting behind the scenes stuff from me for that. And thanks for your supers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. And I hope to see you safe and sound very, very soon. And really check out this video here in the end screen, Papua New Guinea, for example. Interesting stuff. Geological war zone it is when you see how many fault lines and plates and ah, oh, it's overwhelming. Or check out, as I said, the video with the landslide. No, not landslide. Like the ground cracking in real time live on camera for the first time. Video is here. I see you soon, guys. Stay safe.